At 828 meters, the Burj Khalifa has become a glittering symbol of what Dubai can really do. Hello and welcome to Access Middle East, the Davos Conversations. I'm Hadley Gamble in Dubai. This week we catch up with Imar Chairman Mohammed Alabar. Thank you so much for joining Access Middle East. Thank you. I want to kick off by talking about something uh, that's been on the minds of everyone here at the World Economic Forum, and that's the situation in our region, in the Middle East. We've heard from the leaders of Iran, uh, Israel as well. People are talking about Syria. But you've called Dubai a paradise of hope in the region. What do you mean by that? Well, it's, uh, you know, if I always say that, you know, if you look at the source of bad news in the world, unfortunately, the Middle East is the source of bad news. And, and you see the United Arab Emirates and Dubai flourishing, and, and they're really the beacon of hope, and they're growing, and they're optimistic, and they're hopeful, uh, and tourism is, is growing double digit, and, and sector of the economy doing very well. Uh, economic uh, policies, government policies are, 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 are good. So yes, it is really a beacon of hope in the middle of a very interesting region that's uh, unfortunately is not stable. We heard from Iranian President Hassan Rouhani. Uh, how real do you think is his commitment um, to solving the nuclear file, but also to moving forward in terms of regional stability? I think we're all for regional stability. And, and remember, we're all about an hour flight from each other. So the, the map is, is fixed. So we have to go do something about it. And I think, you know, if, if the whole world is, is united to uh, give the Iran a chance and, uh, and, you know, what they're saying uh, sounds good and, and I hope it goes well, I think it will be good for the whole, uh, for the whole region. I think long term it will be good for relationship, for business, for, for economic progress and stability. For a company like Imar, where are the opportunities? Opportunities. I, I would say that all these uh, developing economies look at uh, the Middle East, and no matter what you say about the Middle East, we're still growing five, five and a half percent overall in the Middle East. Africa is the same, Asia about the same. So Iran will will come into that uh, territory, and when when things are going well, and, and I hope all this gets sorted, I think there'll be a lot of business to be done, especially in the infrastructure business where we are in. I think it'd be great opportunities. So you would definitely say then that if Iran's economy is to open up. Up, Imar would be there. I think we should. Dubai's had its fair share of problems over the last 10 years, uh, but things are looking up, especially in the property sector. How concerned are you that another bubble is on the horizon? Well, bubbles, we've seen them all over the world. If it's, if it's in the States in the 1930s or 70s or 80s or 90s, they come and go. That's a fact of life and the same probably all over the world. I think uh, the UAE and Dubai is a young country. We're 42 years old. We're learning. We're trying to move as fast as possible to catch up with the, with the Western world. And while we do that, we learn in the process. And I'm sure after the, the Depression, so many new rules and regulations came into effect to improve uh, the, the economic situation and put rules and regulations and, and, and so forth. Therefore, in, in Dubai, I think it's exactly the same. You know, we've gone through a, a nice growth and then there was the world you know, crashing down, we got affected by it. At the same time, central bank have done a good job and have adjusted their policies towards bank. I think governments have looked into what uh, real estate laws and other laws have to be implemented to make sure that if we were to go through another situation, that it's a bearable mistake. And I always repeat that. That we'll always have up and down, but are they bearable? So in terms of the structural reforms, you're confident that if there's to be an oversupply, perhaps in Dubai, that the, the market's not going to have uh, such a, a bubble as we've seen in the past? Well, I would say that bubbles come and go. But I would believe that governments and individuals and companies have learned and made to make sure that if one to happen again, it shouldn't have the drastic effect that we've seen, at least especially in my company. When you're talking about um, rental prices, for example, rental prices across the UAE and in Dubai in particular were up over a fifth um, uh, from previous years in 2013. Um, and as we go into 2014, we have the excitement of Expo 2020. We have all sorts of new projects kind of coming online. When you look at expat workers, and they're such a huge part of Dubai's economy, yeah. are you at all worried that they're going to get priced out of these markets? Well, first remember that when we talk about the increase in price in 2013, that's after five years of almost a disaster. Uh, disaster years for the, for the industry and for the rental and, and so forth, oversupply. So I don't expect really the increase from 
the low level up to 13, in 13, and then up again in, in 14. But I would suggest that, yes, there will be a move upward. Now, supply and demand is there. You've got people watching the market. There's a lot of construction coming back again to the market. So I think the supply will come in and will give us a bit of balance. The good thing is that also the UAE looks at the situation and adjust their rules and regulation uh, quite quickly. And in terms of MR, what projects? You have some massive projects um, coming online. You're about to start some massive projects. Like Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid City, for Correct. example. Correct. Talk us through some of those new projects. Yeah. Well, you know, Dubai, I must say, uh, is, is really becoming a global city. And, and if you were to look at the whole region, uh, Dubai really is serving a huge, uh, it has a huge reach. Uh, so yes, we do have a quite sizable project. We're, we're running almost uh, 1,500 acres, uh, at least one of the main sites that we are, we are running now that will supply the city for the coming few years. And again, when we do these, you know, we design the buildings, the schools, the roads, the parks, the offices, the retail, hospitality, all that. But what helps us is that just the region is growing in India is growing, Pakistan around us is growing, Iran is growing, the whole Middle East, Africa is growing, and Dubai is becoming really the service hub, uh, the way New York serves uh, America and, and the rest of the world. So you're quite confident then that despite the fact that there are going to be massive supplies coming online in the next decade ahead of this very exciting Expo 2020, um, that the demand is going to be there? Yeah. Well, I don't know about supply coming in uh, massively, but we also have to watch the market. So we really supply watching the market year to year. And the same thing with other suppliers uh, who are supplied to the market, but also the banks are out there. Uh, and I don't think the bank will also give us a good balance. How accountable are you to the Dubai government in terms of decision making? And how involved is Sheikh Mohammed, for example, in your, your day to day operations? Yeah. Uh, the government is not involved. The government actually is just shareholders, and we are a public company. So, you know, corporate governance rules and, and board members and, and you know, all the different committees, which is typically how uh, public companies uh, operate. So, we're really, majority of our boards are independent uh, board members. So, it's, it's run by professional, uh, and we are accountable to our shareholders. If it's the government, government or 70 percent of, of, uh, of our shareholding which is basically to the public so we really run it uh, you know on a professional basis and we decide what's what's good for the shareholders and I hope we, I hope we decide well it's it's very well known in Dubai that you very much have the confidence of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed um, especially after the very very uh, huge success of the Burj Khalifa project the tallest building in the world talk us through that experience we're a young company we're 17 years old and uh, you know the country is growing uh, massive site really massive the, the site's about 500 acres so we've we put in about 12 billion U.S. Uh, in the whole thing between uh, public space, uh, retail, hotels, uh, offices, apartments. So it was a huge endeavor. And I must say that I think if you are passionate uh, and you take that personally um, and you go and get the best people uh, to manage your business, and you manage your cost well. And I think the Lord should be there with you that the economic situation of, of the country and the world is in the right direction. Uh, so we really pushed the design limits, technology limits all the way uh, out of the normal barriers. And I'm glad it, um, I'm glad it worked. When we return on Access Middle East, the Davos Conversations, we'll head to the top of the world with EMAR Chairman Mohammed al -Abar. That's all coming up next. Middle East, the Davos Conversations. I'm here with Imar Chairman Mohammed Alibar. We're on the 152nd floor of the world's tallest building. It doesn't get much higher than this, does it? We'll probably have uh, another few floors to go up, probably seven, eight uh, to uh, 164. That's really where we stop. How many years did it take to complete the Burj Khalifa? It took us about five years to really um, to get it uh, done. Building any building, uh, especially tall buildings, you know, how can you really create landmarks that can survive time on their material and their looks design you know many times you design buildings you like them for the first 10 years and then after that they don't fit the whole team from management to designers they really were able to create a true elegant building 
break it down for me. So we have the Armani Hotel as well as commercial and residential units, correct? Correct. So we start with the Armani Hotel, then we, we move on with our residential floors, then from 124 upward to about 163, then you start having your uh, office floors that way. But as a landlord, how do you navigate those issues when you have some tenants who aren't paying their fees? How do you responsibly navigate that kind of well, issue. I think guys, I mean, ourselves and other developers, they go through this uh, process. Of course, you've got the, uh, some buildings have management corporation uh, committees that look into these matters. For us, it's what we do every day. You have people who are sometimes uh, late. We have to manage that situation. But I, I believe that the ownership of the bridge is something that's very important for all of us. So uh, even if there are shortfalls, we as developers, we look after the building, we keep it very well because it still carries our brand. I want to talk to you about uh, the revival of the Dubai real estate market. The Mar Properties um, is soaring once again. You were up 104%, I believe, in 2013. What are you looking for in terms of growth uh, for this year? Well, of course, I think if you have a, a good market, with a good brand and good balance sheet and a good management, I think you can do quite, quite a lot. So with the move of the world economy, the move of, of the UAE and the city of Dubai, uh, we are progressing with our mixed use development. Uh, our residential is moving forward. Our hospitality and our hotels are moving forward. Uh, so we have uh, probably the next uh, Dubai urban center under design now, which we are going to implement, I hope, in the coming uh, few years. <laughs> We're here on the observation deck, and this is the 124th floor. Talk to us a little bit about the success of We, we really never thought that you know people were coming so high up to look at the desert. And when you come up at this high, you know, of course, you see the beach, you see the city, but you see so much desert. And I think people are just amazed. And we are busy for days, and people could wait for four days to get a ticket, uh, which is great. I'm glad, I'm glad they enjoy it. In the distance, we can see the Dubai International Financial Center, um, and obviously there's been a big rebound um, in property prices uh, since the crash in 2008. Talk to me about the commercial sector. When are we going to see a stabilization there? The real estate bouncing back, it also helped the commercial sector because as the economy of the UAE and, and Dubai really uh, moved up, going to a you know the, the the growth mode i think the the uh, commercial is doing uh, doing well as well you guys diversified you're in hotels you're in malls as well and right. um, what kind of growth are you looking for in those sectors well in, in this economy really we are we are growing uh, our retail and malls are growing our hospitality is of course is growing and many people read the numbers uh, while our uh, you know the base of our business which is the residential side of it is is growing um, you know really and an incredible uh, double-digit uh, numbers. So I would say that diversification have helped us, especially during the crisis. Uh, so we are going to focus on these three uh, areas of the actual real estate. Our main bread and butter, which is the residential, will always stay there, but I would say hospitality is helping us and it's growing, and retail and malls is also uh, going in the right direction. But the diversification is a must for us to stay healthy and have a strong balance sheet. What is the next mega project? Project for Imar. We've done this, which is about 500 uh, acres. I think our next development, which is about 1,500 acres, to really create another hub or pocket uh, in Dubai, but with the most sophisticated technology to really help people live a better life and suit, I guess, the, the Y generation. I think that's really is going to be our challenge and it will be fun. What's the most exciting part about having orchestrated um, a new way of life in the Emirates? Well, it's, it's the growth. It's the growth story and, and the people who participate in the growth. And truly, I mean, this region is looking for a hub. And Dubai quickly is becoming a true regional hub of, of, of this area. So therefore, you know, we serve India, we serve the Middle East, we serve Iran, we serve Africa. So we're almost New York for the, for the USA, but moving extremely fast. You're behind the world's tallest building, some of the most iconic structures in Dubai. What makes you tick? We're just seeing people enjoy what we build. And, and, and I think that's the true joy, is that it is working. You're an average equestrian, you're an endurance rider. Talk to me about what that brings to your life. There's always a story between man and his horse. You know, going on endurance rides, 160 kilometers, I think it's almost like the greatest meditation. It makes me a better 
person, it makes me a better businessman. And I think it's a great hobby that I enjoy uh, with friends. What drives you to succeed? I have a big influence uh, from Sheikh Mohammed, who really taught me not to have fear in what I do, and always want to move forward, always wanting to move forward. Could you imagine the success that Dubai has achieved? Uh, honestly, no. I, I, thought, I thought Dubai is good, it will succeed, but just the macro and, and, and micro situation, global economy, regional matters, and the internal management of, of the city and the UAE, just, just such a pleasant surprise. So when Sheikh Mohammed came to you and said, I want you to build the tallest building in the world, was there ever a moment where you thought, oh, this is a really big challenge? Well, first of all, I really, because of his training, I have no fear. And the first question he asked, how much taller? And I said, this is 40% taller than anything that ever been built. He said, good, when do you start? So in terms of the next big project, has he come to you with any new ideas for something bigger I think, and bigger? I think he's quite keen on what can add real quality life to the city of Dubai. When we return on Access Middle East, the Davos Conversations, we'll have more from the chairman of Imar, Mohammed Alibar. We'll also take a closer look inside the world's biggest mall.